Um, hello everybody, and welcome to D&D &D Behind the Screen, where we're going to have a bit of a watch party uh, about some of the behind the screen stuff. If you want to know what happened to the campaign, watch the update video. I it's did. I did. So with me here, I have a very giggly bunch. <laughs> Case in that point. Was my, that was my fault. <laughs> because we're watching Attack of the Mole Men. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. hello Roomsbath. Hello. Also, it's... hello Willis and Albas through in Twitch chat. Yeah. So this I'm was... there too, but I'm just local. So this was yeah. recorded <laughs> way, way back, I think in June? Yeah, June. It's, yeah. Second Way back June. in June when we started. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, so introductions. Uh, okay, so who's there? Who's... here. Hello, VGR. Um, hey, all just dropping by to say hi. I'm going to talk more tomorrow when I've got more energy. More energy. Right now, I'm way too sleepy. See you all. Sure. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Thank you for coming. So, uh, yeah. So who are you all playing? So, who, who's first? Who's well, on you, first? Um, I'm on second. I don't know who's on third. Um, <laughs> God, that's an old one. <laughs> I know. Uh, anyway, hello everyone. Actually, uh, faces. Do we have faces? Face cam? Uh, well, I've got my face cam on anyway. Um, uh, you have the setup so people can see. Hmm? On the D&D streams, you had... They can, the... already, they can already see his face. Well, you... Very like <laughs> you had at least my face as well. Um... Are we having that or no, not? No, it's, it's just screen. Okay, screen uh, sure. So, uh, hello everyone. I'm Kango Fango, and I played <laughs> my Magellana Phalor, who was a, well, a gnome druid. Okay. Uh, Emitube, hello. Hello. Uh, Emichu, I played Carl, who was an Aracocker archer. Yeah, good old Carl. Carl. Uh, and Mr. W? Carl. You need a Christmas party when you got this, when you got this kind of party. <laughs> uh, I was playing, I was playing Arkin Fenwick, um, an elven wizard. And we have Willis. It's Breck Egan, the half-elf war priest. Okay. <laughs> so, let's get started properly. Right. So, pl tell me if this is okay and if the vol, if yeah. if you can hear it. So I think you can. If you right click it on Discord, you might be able to change the volume as well if it's too loud. Probably. The uh, stream volume. Actually. Okay. It's on one sixty for me. Roomspot said hello. Watch party. Yay. <laughs> Smiley. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So <laughs> here right. we go. Again, this was in July. June. Hence, uh, June. Hence the summer. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to a new series about what it's like to GM Dungeons yes, & Dragons. Sharon, this us series will be split <laughs> into three parts. The first part is the preparation phase before the session, which is, is what you're watching right now. Then it there will a be a laggy, live stream. Hold on, yeah. I might be able audio to... Audio is fine. No, hold on. It's a bit laggy, audio if, is I change, oh, yeah, actually. if I make it smaller... One second. Oh, for the viewers... Oh. Oh, look, you, you, you oh, could you, 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 yeah, you yeah. use the, How about you use Three. the Tears 19... Oh. No. Could you use the Tears 19 I'm scene? Just no, no, I'll just so zoom it's in. in the corner. Actually, oh, does that not work? Uh, uh technical doesn't difficulties. Really. Hold on. Um, just Maybe. use the Tears 19 yeah, yeah, yeah. small. But put the, put the preview on so you see the I size. Know. Yeah. Yeah, because I can't zoom in yeah, because full, full screen yeah, for full, the others. Full screen's just laggy. Yeah, one second. This, I don't That's know. That's too big as well, isn't it? Maybe. Is that going to be good? W we can try it. Sorry about this. Rooms buff says, it's fine for me. Yes, because you're not watching it on Discord. Um, it's fine, genuinely. Okay, well then let's, let's try, let's try, it try like that. Let's see. Let's have a look. What it's like to GM Dungeons & Dragons. This series will be split into three parts. The first part is the preparation the idea, phase before. before the session, which is what you're watching right now. Then there will be a live streamed session, which is going to be live streamed over on Twitch. And then after that, there'll be another video, which is a kind of a report about uh, what it was like to GM that particular session. 
and what sort of things I might have had to improvise or what maybe didn't go to plan and that sort of thing. So that's the, the three parts of every episode. At the moment the plan is to have around eight episodes each one comes out of the <laughs> yeah. and this yeah. is quite Hilarious. beautiful where I am currently. Uh, just if I turn this way then you might mm. be able to see a little bit more. Uh, right, see. so <laughs> uh, yes, the players will only be able to watch these videos after the campaign's been finished, of course, because it wouldn't be fair if they knew exactly what I was planning. But yeah. you do get, get to know to watch exactly it what I'm planning, mm -hmm. which is rare. Uh, so yes, if you would like to watch all of these things together, there is going to be a playlist where they're all going to be listed in chronological order. So yeah. now back over to the Bruce other me, who on. is currently at home. And Sorry, is that, now there are distortions. Sense. Yeah, now there are distortions. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, no, that was, that was just on the, the replay because... Just the wind. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't yeah. do anything about that, sorry. Okay. We were all preparing right. uh, the, the world and, and all that sort of stuff. So, I hope he's got some good things to say because <laughs> I've kind of hyped this up now for you and it'd be quite embarrassing if he only came up with stupid stuff. So don't, don't take it from I'll, me. Take I'll, it from I'll, me. I'll, I'll see you then, or he'll see you then. <laughs> bye bye. Bruce Buff. I deliberately try to not do world building in my mind before recording this because I wanted the process to be recorded. So I think the scope of the geography should be a little bit more restricted, so that uh, we can have quality over quantity. So okay, how about? We have a chain of islands, and actually, in this case, let's get started with the map. So we'll just use this mm -hmm. temporarily, and this 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 map is just for me to to work with. If oh. I did, uh, if I did make a map for the players, then I would hand draw that myself. Um, not that you have to, of course. You can use plenty of online mapping tools, which work just fine. We need to think about a scale, so. Uh, a hex grid is useful because hex grids allow like one hex is usually uh, one day's travel if you're if you're walking. So let's see if we can quickly find a hex generator. Also sorry about the clicking sometimes. And then we might be able to download a. Mm. That's all right. It, it's as an image and <laughs> overlay it. Uh, actually, tell you what. Let's go with twenty columns, but let's reduce the rows to eighteen. Well. It, had, it would should be 17 skimmer, so, to line up. so let's try that <laughs> I'm just going to keep going with this until I've got a good scale I'm comfortable with okay so I've imported it let's scale it down a bit yeah that seems like it it fits well enough if each one of these is one day's uh, travel, so from one side to the other side. One day is travel walking. That, I think that's about 24 miles. Let's just start drawing a landmass in. Well, actually, what, what sort of what sort of biomes do I want? It would be easy to go with tropical. I think that a more like a, a Scottish Highland or Ireland or Norway kind of theming might be fun because that is a, a, a little bit more dramatic, perhaps. So well, I'll just draw tropical. in a little <laughs> island. <laughs> I say a little island. It's 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 fairly large. It's just something like that. Uh, also, I'll change the opacity of the grid slightly so it's not as obtrusive. Maybe we should have a little bit of tropical in there as well. But then, okay, let's just say we'll we'll draw in a tropical island over here somewhere. Okay, so how how would we make that make sense? Well, we need a source of heat. Don't know, you tell so us. how exactly. about <laughs> we've got volcanoes in the middle? We could have volcanoes right there, ish, uh, or or maybe over here, and they generate a lot of heat, and the ocean currents take that heat and wash it around this island, and that creates the the hot temperatures. Ah, and that could also 
maybe make for some good drama with storms uh, brewing because of the rising heat and the cold around it. That could be interesting. Let's draw in some of the rocky volcano islands. And these don't have to be large. It, they, they can be much less than a, a day's travel across. So we we'll just draw in one there and then one in here and just maybe maybe we could even create a little like a, a, a band maybe this is where tectonic plates meet or something and that creates all these volcanoes and so if a ship wanted to go through here maybe it could be quite treacherous as well so that could be interesting maybe that could give some adventure ideas so at this point we should start labeling things so volcanic Isles. One second, I just want to uh, clarify that at this point I had literally no idea what I wanted to do for an adventure yet, so wow. that's <laughs> why I said so, that, that, so that might... Hmm? So you, you were literally coming up with this on the spot? Yeah, so that's why I said that maybe those could give some adventure ideas, like the, the volcanic islands that are treacherous to, to navigate around. Also, yeah, also... Well, well done. <laughs> Yeah. It's showing well, up now. Do you we want call it old Valeria? <laughs> do you want your face come on here? Like live or not? Oh, because it's not um, it's just the video. It's fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Why not? Okay. Th this I mean, in game I could easily come up with fancy names for these to then give to the players. But again, this is just for my own reference. Volcanic Isles. Okay, and then I'll just write a tiny little paragraph, just so that I can reference if I need to. So, as you know, which are responsible for the tropical climate of the... Uh, let's just call the... We don't have a name for these islands yet, so let's just say the Northeastern Island. The Northeastern Islands. There we go. I will make this two column, saw, yeah. two yeah. column layout, because that's easier to reference. We've already got two islands. Let's just assume that both of them have some sort of civilization on them. I'm also thinking of what might be interesting plot-wise, because building a beautiful world is fine, but there also has to be plot relevance. How there about does? Yes. <laughs> there either are or were powerful entities that were that were or are guiding civilization here now these could be liches or dragons or Ooh. something like that so i was gonna say romulans or klingons okay let's start with dragons <laughs> depending on the kind of dragon you typically want some sort of mountains if I were, if this were a longer campaign, I'd probably pay more attention to plate tectonics and how where mountains would form. But for this kind of scale of game, it really isn't that necessary. The interesting bit, so on this map, the players, okay. wherever they're going to go, <laughs> it's probably going to be between islands, and that means it's probably going yeah, to as be if between islands, crossing <laughs> over lot. the island, through the island to get to the coast, to get to another island, stuff like that. So putting the mountains in a place where the players will need to cross them. Well, that's an, an interesting obstacle that the players will even need, either need to overcome or bypass somehow. So, how about... How about... Uh, I just paint on mountains kind of going through here. All the way up to the coast up there. And then kind mm -hmm. of coming down like tabletop audio through here. Well, maybe yeah. not that far. Maybe just like mm -hmm. that. Because we can, friends. like for example here, if the players are over on this bit and they want to go over to an island over here or something, or even just to a city over here, actually a city over here is better, then either they've got to cross the mountains, which is probably going to be faster, or they've got to go to the coast, take our ship all the way around, or we could put some oh, other sort of mm -hmm. uh, obstacle down here which the players could then choose to either go through, so to go through there also. So then the players have got three options, each of which has benefits and drawbacks. So let, yeah, let's just focus on this island for now. Yeah, dragons, right. So, I mean, the idea of a dragon ruling over a city or even an entire civilization, if it's on the scale of an island, is nothing new. 
Uh, it could still be interesting, but how about we give a twist to it and say a dragon was ruling here, but then for some reason the dragon left, just gone. Um, <laughs> Because Spoilers. a dragon's lair in the mountains like, is just is great because I mean, there's probably treasure goes in there, AWOL. or maybe people think <laughs> yeah. there's treasure in there, Basically. and so you need a reason for that treasure to still be there if the dragon isn't protecting it. And so the op you need an obstacle, which mountains are a great obstacle. High as the GM <laughs> need to know. Well, I don't need to know why the dragon left. I could just leave it here, but I want to know why the dragon left. Maybe the dragon had competition here. And another opportunity opened up somewhere else where the dragon could rule a different people without competition. Okay, so let's say let's wow. say dragon's always looking uh, for the easier option. Actually tell you what. <laughs> mm, I was, the, I was thinking about maybe differentiating <laughs> in like it's creating like a, a different color for information that the people know that is known about, or information that is secret, like that nobody knows. And let's try that. I've not tried that before. Might be useful. Let's make the, the secret information stuff hot pink. Why not? Ooh. Now let's come up with a competition here. Because no more pink what was your title fighting? <laughs> uh, it's a bit again. A lich. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Maybe? Yeah, no, it, it was, seems a bit boring. She was tiered of fighting. Mm. A beholder. <laughs> A beholder. She okay, she was tired of fighting for control of her subjects. So when she heard word of and to the new job west opportunity over which she <laughs> could easily rule, she up and left. There we go. And actually, now Why? that I'm looking at this, yeah, we that, spent the all this time looking for her. She know wasn't that even there. Was yep. in the mountains. <laughs> oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, people would know that. If you're being ruled by a dragon, you see the dragon flying off to the mountains. You can pre be pretty sure that that's where the dragon's lair is. Okay, so that's. I mean, yeah, that's. I, wow, I really like. So that's some great world building we've already got here. <laughs> and this would already well, be enough server. for me to start. Uh, well, maybe not quite enough, but almost enough for me to start a session at this point, because I could probably just come up with some plot line uh, about the, the players having come to this land, uh, being hired to go up to the mountain and talk to the dragon to find out why the dragon isn't ruling anymore, only to find out that the dragon is actually gone. Um, and that could be a great plot hook uh, and stuff, but uh, it's not quite enough yet. Because we've got a whole lot of stuff yeah, going on here. Yeah, we got sidetracked by. Uh, I like to create enough content to give. Looking for imaginary every brothers. Character <laughs> well, what, a just one of them. Of. Say what? What you saying? Or so we know. We we never <laughs> got that far. We got sidetracked by looking for imaginary brothers. <laughs> Singular. <laughs> yeah. Enough content to give yeah. every character a different plot hook, if I can, <laughs> that then all later interconnect. But we'll see. Let's come up with it. Yeah, and I think that that was a mistake. I think that for the for I think the format would have worked a lot better if you all had the same plot hook, mm. uh, which is also actually something that uh, a comment on the updated video suggested that might have worked a bit better. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's true. Oh, I mm. see. For, some, for something like this, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The short eight-hour session. <laughs> Eight hour sessions. Eight hour sessions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we. I mean, I used to. Do, I mean, we used to do that. Yeah. Well, they weren't quite eight, eight hours, hours, but they were very long. Six hours. Six six hours. hours. Roundabouts there. Yeah. Just the off-stream ones. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Let's continue. Okay. This dragon, because for one thing, it's going to be easier to reference in the notes. Also, it's going to give me as the GM more of an idea of the this character's personality. Let's actually tell you what, I'll have a look in the monster manual, I'll have to blur this because copyright. Had we, had, had, we had, we, had we given you our characters yet by that point? No, you had not. Okay. Finally. Uh, let's see. This will probably be a chromatic dragon. 
because I wanted to be evil. Because I think a people that have been ruled by this evil uh, being, that the being is now gone, is a little bit more interesting than this good being having ruled them and then leaving, because that, that being may not have left otherwise if it actually cared for these people. So, okay, black never dragons got the impression that are they were evil. Hmm? I never got the impression that they were evil. Well, mm -hmm. I did from um, <laughs> from whatever his face was, the one who was um, Sorum. No, Sorum? no, no, no the, the guy who was hiring Sorum. Oh, the oh. you know, you know, Kral 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 no, it's Kral Matan, no. you mean? It's Kral 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I, yeah, I assume he won't be trusted. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Well, we'll I'm see. In the wrong campaign. Yeah. I was, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see how he fits into all this. Evil. Mm. And I can change <laughs> this, of course. I can change the alignment of these creatures. It's my game. I can do what I want, but I just want to have a look. <laughs> oh, well. so, I'm going to take my dice and go home. <laughs> yeah. Blue dragon. Well, blue dragons are lawful evil. Okay, so maybe a blue dragon. Uh, green dragons. Oh, green dragons are also lawful evil. Huh. And green huh. dragons intelligence. Green matriarch. Well, this, this mm -hmm. is an ancient green dragon. <laughs> um, an adult green dragon. Yeah, they've got really, they've got really quite high intelligence and charisma and all that, that sort of stuff. Green dragons, the most cunning and treacherous of true dragons. Green dragons use misdirection and trickery to get the upper hand against their enemies. Nasty tempered and thoroughly evil, they take special pleasure in. Uh, subverting and corrupting the good-hearted. Um, oh, it's blue. Okay, they live <laughs> in forests and stuff like that, apparently. But I can change that, you know. Actually, I, I know. think I'm going to go with a, a green dragon. <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like, like our sort of... <laughs> I'm gonna sleep on the seti tonight, no. <laughs> um, what would she be called? Mm. Which would also think, is this a name the people gave to her, or is this a name that she gave herself? How about well, the actually, green matriarch? What a oh brilliant God. suggestion! Willis, you're a genius. Let me just quickly plagiarize that. Hold on. Well, this is more of a title I'm thinking of, not really a name. And the title's fine. The title's fine. So how about the Green Queen? Oh. If the players turn up to like <laughs> when the campaign starts and they, they go here, they yeah. hear about oh the Green Queen left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't like the the double uh, <laughs> yeah. double E's. How about the green <laughs> matriarch? Oh, yeah, yeah. I might change Whoa, the name later. He said the thing. He said the thing. Okay, so we've got the that. double double E's. Yeah. And that's probably probably enough. Mm -hmm. I'll just do a little. I'll give a little bit more context of her as a a ruler. So I'm picturing the sort of character who she wants people to treat her like this great ruler who is admired by her subjects and who has the res respect and all of these things um, but the reason people give it to her is because if they don't then she's gonna eat them and Yum. they the people know that and she knows that the people are only doing that because uh, of fear, they don't want to be eaten. but she's okay with that because <laughs> no, I'm she's not really into that. a great <laughs> <being> <laughs> green <laughs> dragon, and she can do that. And uh, so, okay, let's go with that. Let's explore a little bit into that. Yeah, there's a Jessica. Uh, hmm. Well, there's a green space near here. Mm -hmm. The dogs are often on, and so mm. quite near. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, know, I so genuinely fun. thought, is that Jesse? <laughs> when, you, when, you, wait, when, you, wait, when you wait, when you say the dogs, I assume you don't mean your pets. No, mm. just but, there are dogs. Mm. Yeah. I right. have yet, I have yet to convince them to get a dog <laughs> with yeah. their walking habits. <laughs> I just think at some point we need to share all of our background stories with everybody, each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Oh yeah, properly. Right. Let's maybe well, not on stream, but no. Well, but I mean, it's sometimes yeah. just. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I spent a lot of time writing that novel. I know you did, <laughs> yeah. and I very much enjoyed reading it. Genuinely. <laughs> yeah. 
So. Oh yeah, oh. Hmm? Oh, you mean in-game. Oh, I see. Yeah. I, I, was, I, was I thought you meant really actual, off. our actual no. backstory. Yeah. Okay. No, it's, yeah. we, in, yeah. in real life we don't call them backstories, we call them trauma. Ah. Yeah, uh, yeah well, I'd be, yeah, I'd be up for that, just the in-game thing yeah. we wrote. Yeah, okay. So, let's yeah, not, not your actual autobiography. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Explore a little bit into Jessica. the dogs outside. <laughs> no, let's explore a little bit into oh, like the Beholder. <laughs> does. And Beholders are a bit different than the the dragon. Because the dragon, I mean, she, she knew how powerful she was and she uh, ruled with um, an a breath weapon and claws an and teeth, basically. <laughs> but a Beholder would do that differently because Beholders are notoriously paranoid about everything. They live for ages, literally, and they spend pretty much all of their time parano being paranoid about anything and everything that could possibly kill them or harm oh, them in any me. way, and they go to extraordinarily <laughs> unreasonable lengths to protect against, to pr protect themselves against pretty much every eventuality. That they can think of, and they can think of a lot of event eventualities. So, so isn't that normal? <laughs> <laughs> that of course explains why the dragon couldn't kill the beholder. But the beholder, I think, would rule through minions. The beholder would just be hidden away in its underground maze of. Basically, so just to give a little description of a beholder for those who don't know, the beholder is. Uh, it's an official D and D monster, and it's yeah. basically a really big uh, ball with a mouth and and big eye in the middle, and has loads of eyes, talk tentacles that it can shoot different magic beams with, and it's oh. an eldritch. Uh, well, yeah, it's 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 basically not a very pleasant thing. I see. I'm now just seeing the uh, the connections with Emmy with Emmy Chu's little um, adventure back from the post office. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. out of context. Oh, yeah. The adventure to the post office. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, let's continue. Sure. Tunnels with minions, and it would have oh, minions who go tell other minions mm, yeah. who tell politicians or who tell uh, whoever what to do. Yeah, let's come up with a name. Basically everyone I we mean, met was a minion. A, a name well. that the beholder gives itself, because if it, nobody knows about it, nobody can give mm. it a title or a name. Even Alia? Well, we'll see. Okay. So... Well, that was a, mi a minion of a minion. Beholders are quite oh. aliens, so maybe just an oh, alien yeah, sounding name. Tell. Sorry, what you say? Could you repeat that, please? If we're going to list... If, if the, he's telling... The teacher's telling us a story. Let's shut up and let him speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, it, dis it, it distracts from uh, the rest of the class. <laughs> okay, yeah. Good. Basically, Twitch chat. Okay. Yeah. How about Zinthmar? Eh, I don't know. Just something that sounds a little hard to say. Actually, how about we put a K in front and then delete the K? So, Xynthmar, like that. Yeah, when I come up with kind of, <laughs> kind of eldritch beings or aberrations or that sort of thing, I just try to make their names as hard to say as I can while yes, I can I'm, still say them. I am them. aware. <laughs> May, I am, me and my vowel, notes please. are aware. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to buy a vowel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Oh, basically, you give them all Welsh names. <laughs> well, bas basically, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's suitably tricky to say. Sounds strange enough. That could that could be the name of the beholder. Yeah, of course. And then we're gonna have a lot of pink in here because nobody knows about it. Ah, mm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I just had an idea. Yeah, we never did. What if? Well, yeah. The title itself should be pink. <laughs> because of how notoriously paranoid Notorious. the mm -hmm. beholders are. What if uh, Xynthmar? I've got to get used to saying that name. Synthmar, what if Synthmar doesn't know why the Green Matriarch left? This Beholder, this Beholder came here, there was this Green Dragon, 
the Beholder figured out how she works and managed to put in safeguards against her and managed to keep on manipulating behind the scenes to remain in control of the situation ish and then one day the green matriarch just isn't there anymore she's gone that's a new situation and he doesn't have a reason for it imagine what that could do to the mind of of a beholder, paranoid as it is, that could be an excellent to get for mm -hmm. an adventure. Thinking Maybe from South Park. I've never seen that show. <laughs> he's super paranoid and just constantly just making random <laughs> noises because he's so stressed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I see. Just imagine the beholder just ah, the green matriarch, she's gone. <laughs> she went to get reinforcements. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe the, the party is sent to have a look and find out what happened with the Green Matriarch. Because nobody knows why she left, or that she's even left. Yeah, maybe people don't know that she's left. <laughs> yeah, maybe people... Because originally I thought, oh yeah, people know that she left. But what if people just haven't heard from her in a long, long time? I think that's a bit more interesting. The players can discover that she's actually gone. I think he'd want to live <laughs> no, we don't. quite close to the people <laughs> yeah. he uh, controls. Uh, right under their noses, but without any of them knowing. So Snip, we'll need to figure out where <laughs> the capital is. If we think about how cities become rich, wealthy, how they gain influence, influential, then the most common thread is trade. And trade would be great on the coast, facing the other islands. Yeah, so what is the what should the city be called? Well, let's 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 continue with the idea that this is a trade city. Dimmering so city. maybe something port. <laughs> uh, it's quite close to the mountains. You should have said you should have told me that ages ago. To be kind of highland, <laughs> a bit bleak landscape mostly. So it could literally just be bleak port. Uh, because if you go into the the history of place names, you often find that it's really very, very simple. Uh, like that. Let's see, what how would bleak port look written down? I'll put in brackets. Capital. Would the beholder live directly underneath the capital? Or would the beholder live a little bit outside? I think a little bit outside is probably fun because then I can also do a little bit more with kind of the environment that the beholder lives in and what, what effect the beholder has on the environment like for example if the beholder is researching spells or is researching magic or experimenting uh, then maybe there could be strange animals walking around like sheep but in, instead of normal sheep ears they've got bat wings or something like Whoa! that oh interesting actually yeah i've just had a good idea let's let's put yeah, in a good idea a road going through the mountains <laughs> and that is probably going to have a lot of trade going through it's going to be quite busy but it's also going to be a hotspot for bandits and that sort of thing so that also creates potential plot hooks so let's start with that it kind of winds its way over here and kind of winds its way up and through the mountains, comes out, and then goes pretty much straight into Bleakport. That also would explain why um, the Green Matriarch would have her lair right there, maybe overlooking this this arterial road. Should this road have a specific name? I think it should. <laughs> something that can be ref like that sort of detail can really pull the players in like uh yeah be careful on the on the mountain way or whatever it's called like the silk road like the silk road is is a really very evocative title well i suppose is this we could worms? go into figure out what <laughs> this what these these islands produce and export Dragon or import road. and actually could tell you be. what let's do that the not green could, no, is not, not here, here, a lot. Just a little Sorry. bit. Um, 
Actually, I'm going to quickly duplicate this because I want number two to be where the beholder lives. And that should be right there on the road just as it exits the mountains in the foothills. And then how about... Where all the tombs are. Gems. Or whatever those things were that... Mm, yeah, gems. Maybe. Gems are fine. Mm. How about we've got another... Like maybe another mountain range or something like that over here, or, or something like that over here, or where we've got uh, a gem mine, or maybe a meteor crashed here or something. No, damn There's a really, really, really rich area where it's just got so many <laughs> gems, and they're mining that Someone's here. Someone's been playing but too then much Minecraft. Transport them to Bleakport <laughs> to then sell, because Bleakport is this really busy trade port. Now they could go by ship around down here, but that would take a long time, or they could go around here, which may be safer, but it would also take a longer time. So let's just put this over here somewhere, and we need to re—we need to give it a, a town, the, the settlement a name, of course. It's something, we need something that sounds fantastical, this is like obviously port. a fantasy setting, <laughs> but also not quite as literal. So. Okay, let's call it Gem Haven for now. I know now. it's spelled wrong, I fixed it And then we can always change that later if I come up with a better name. We now need a name for this road. Yeah. My so mind, back over my mind was to... in the world building and not really in the spell oh, okay. spelling, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's alright. Actually, let's get, just give Gem Haven a little it's a title description. Yeah, mm. I mean, that's pretty much all I need for now. Yeah, actually, yeah, we were doing the road. <laughs> Could be the Spartle way. Because the gems Ooh. go over it. No, how about the treasure road? Treasure, yeah. How about we have a little town just on the road in the foothills, just down there. Uh, and that's where... Yeah, that's where the builder is underneath. So we need to come up with a little oh. name for that. And this is probably a little town that, that grew up from uh, offerings tabling and uh, uh, rest for uh, travelers, traders, uh, merchants who bring gems to Bleakport and also who bring supplies back over to Gemhaven. I've just had an idea. If the Beholder is on me, so for those of you who don't know, Beholders can warp reality when they dream. If a beholder dreams, then th there are specific things that can happen if a beholder dreams of certain things, but I like the idea that when a beholder dreams, elements of the beholder's dream manifest in the real world. And oh, no. My dreams. Uh, the they're just the real things, things now. Mm -hmm. So it could be <laughs> something like maybe in a certain area near where the beholder is, gravity just inverts for a little bit. Oh. Or maybe mm. it could be that, again, like the, the animals that have, like like sheep that have bats, like bat wings for, for ears, or it could be uh, so all sorts of these weird strange, stuff came from. Yep. curious, uh. magical things that happen. And nobody has any idea why it happens. It just happens over here. And that could Whoopie be a tourist attraction as well. <laughs> yeah, so was it dreaming of them? That. <laughs> actually, yeah, the, that's, that's actually, actually a great idea. We could give it the town two names. If the beholder only showed up here, uh, say a number of years ago, hmm. the beholder is a fairly new arrival, then the town would have had an old name, and then maybe a new name. That, the, that it was given because, well, it's the town where all the, maze, the, the, the the strange, weird magic stuff happens. Okay, let's put it on here as the new name, which is supposed to be a name that kind of attracts tourists and um, people, are, like scholars, uh, wizards, that sort of thing, who maybe want to study these effects. Maybe it could be, could be Veil Rift. There we go, Ooh. Veil Rift. <laughs> A few years ago, and then we need to write in pink when the well when Synthar, the beholder, arrived. Strange magical effects began to 
occur. Uh, <clears throat> the stars sometimes look different. That could be a thing. It, it might not... It, the, the beholder obviously isn't actually changing how the, the, the stars themselves, but maybe the beholder is changing the people's perception of the stars. Maybe it's uh, an illusion effect. Oh, here's a classic one from, like, uh, fairy folklore, that sort of thing, which is that uh, milk spoils instantly. So, let's also oh, put in that... Oh, he's some spoiled milk the hmm? Or th the uh, beholder ate some bad Mexican food before he went to sleep that night that he dreamed of the yeah. cobblestones. He, yeah, yeah, I mean, that would <laughs> make sense. He ate <laughs> bad cheese. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Maybe a cheese from one of those animals, the, the weird ones. From a previous stream, <laughs> I say. Just over, well, just over two years ago. Let's just say two years ago. Okay. Two years is plenty of time for a beholder to um, set up his lair and get his minions, all that sort of stuff set up. Um, it might even be a little bit of an explanation for why the players might be able to get away with certain things, because if the Beholder had been there for a long, 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 long time, then th there would be so many contingencies in in play that, that there would be no, no way the players could realistically go against him. Now we need to come up with the, the old name of Veil Rift. It's just either, so either it's the last stop just before you head into the mountains proper, or it's the first Respite. Is respite the right word? I think it's the right word. Yep. After yeah, you've crossed the, right the mountains. <laughs> so how about we call it... How about Hiker's Release? Ooh. Seems good. Oh, oh I misspelled it here. It's supposed Yay. to be gem like that. <laughs> See, uh, and I even fixed the thing. You probably told me. Nice. <laughs> uh, I need to update it here as well. Yeah. I want to put in something fantastical. Something that is right to determine a game of D&D. So how about we put in an elven city right in the water, right there. I mm. just It's just on a whim. I want to be able to bring oh, it up in uh, conversation. Hmm? Wait a minute. Sorry, what? We missed this. We missed it. Well, an elven it, city in the water. It was mentioned. But it no. wasn't a When thing. was it mentioned? Well, we'll get to that. But okay. <laughs> but it, it wasn't something that you followed up on. But you could have done. Mm. I didn't know in advance, so... Yeah. I don't even remember it being mentioned. Mm. Yeah, well... Like NPC conversations. And oh, I do. Mm. If I come up with plot threads during the game or something, I've got another piece to play with. So, what should this be called? Okay, well, my other game, the old elvish words, uh, the word utral means city. We need a word in front. So, actually, let's let's see. Okay, what special things does the city have other than being out in the middle of the ocean? <clears throat> let's say it's built on a giant mollusk. Let's have a look. Uh, but yeah, it's built on, like, like this, it's built on the back of a giant closed oyster that's been closed for as long as anybody can remember. And then there, that, that has so much potential for storytelling. So, how about... So what, what would they yeah, name it? If it wakes up and opens, Something the whole city, city slides off into the ocean. Yep. Uh, yeah. Rune Spot <laughs> says, sea <save> view. <laughs> yep. How about... So what, what would they name it? It would something city. This Kram means the great. So um, how about Vij? Uh, we could do two eyes. Why not? Which means... Let's keep it simple. Ocean city. Ancient elven city <laughs> built on the back of a <laughs> built on the back of a giant oyster 
which not has not going remained to nope. closed and motionless for as long as anyone or anything can oops, anything can remember. But I do want a little bit more interest there, just a little bit more interest. How about the shell of it, or the shell of the oyster, the outer layer of it, is a really very valuable material for tools to be made of. Nobody's ever been able to mine through the inner layer of the shell to see if there's, there's a still <laughs> a living yeah. creature inside. Not even the dwarfs. Okay, <laughs> so that gives that gives a nice little thing to come up in conversations that would that just makes the world feel a whole lot larger. At this point, all that's left. But yeah, like this, this is the sort of thing that would have come up more if you had spoken with more of the, um, like the counselors, mm. uh, if, if you, if you'd spoken with more of them, but then again, I, you'd already spent so long in the city that with the, the format of this series, I really just try to push you forward as much as possible so it's just a bit of a thing that mm. kind of fell to the side but oh well I see before we begin playing is for me to come up with a uh, with a few plot hooks for the first adventure of the party and a few NPCs and um, important locations within Bleakport, because I'm fairly certain that the players, the party will likely start in Bleakport. It's a different day, and I have had some ideas regarding world building between when I recorded the last clip and today. So oh. the first idea yeah. is so about... At this point I obviously did have your characters, or oh, at least most of them, I think. Uh, the town previously called Hikers Release. The idea is that Hikus Release was originally the name of a, uh, a tavern or a pub in the town, and that was probably their first, and then the town grew around it. So let's quickly add that to the description in the world building. The next idea I had is that since the people of this large island were ruled by this, this dragon, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about if all of the roofs of all of the important buildings, like uh, <laughs> palaces or or um, castles, temples, all of that, all of the roofs are built of wood, because that would not only make it easier for the dragon to mm. attack people inside, should Such they wrong her. <laughs> It would also remind the people that they are under the whim of the dragon. So I think that is something I will add to Bleakport. Since mm. all of these mm, gems are coming from Gem Haven, yeah. <laughs> and they have to get through the town of Bleakport to get all the way down to the harbour, to make this a bit more fantastical, how about the main street going through the town, the centre of the town, how about if that has a channel dug along it with another road running underneath? And then we have like a either a wooden or a, a glass or crystalline really does sound like you ceiling have a to that, which is the <laughs> floor of the street above. And the street below is the one that all of the uh, gem uh, carts and wagons take to deliver gems down to the port and to get supplies up through the city. Uh, I quite like that idea, so I'll quickly write that down. What if the town guard 
were some sort of lizard folk that uh, serve the dragon directly and the dragon uses these lizard folk or used these lizard folk to uh, keep the peace and to also control the town because these would be while they would report to the uh, nobility of this this town and they could be ordered by them they would be loyal only to the dragon and so that's an, perhaps another layer of control over these people so let's add this in quickly we'll call them the scale guard uh -huh. and at this point i think it's probably a good idea to give the island a name because now we've already got a good a, a, well fairly good idea of who lives here what some of the history is how about we call it the island the fallen sky island because or or skyfall land because the gems are being excavated from this giant asteroid that hit the island and that could be a, an event that has been remembered throughout countless generations that is still giving this island its name so i like skyfall land or skyfall land probably because it would be changed a little bit over time to be more easily said i've been thinking about the name they found of the, the chest in the middle when they got to it <laughs> did, it start, did it start raining as we were recording this? I can hear like pitter patters. I think that's, yeah, that's about the, the ambience, the, yeah, the music. The music ambience. Ambience. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's wagon sounds, like a, like an old wagon oh, right. going along. He's yeah. typing on in a wagon. Okay, let yeah. him move. let him cook. Yeah. 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 And it's being pulled by a chihuahua. Of course. Hell yeah. <laughs> Who else? Hundreds of chihuahuas. <laughs> a team of chihuahuas. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While I like the name Bleakport, and I like the idea of it, if this is the place that the players will begin at, the adventure, <laughs> then it should be something that inspires the players, that they want to explore, that fills them with this feeling of, of wonder, and Bleakport, while it seems realistic, doesn't really do that. <laughs> That's so true. I've been that thinking, sound rather how bleak about, place to visit. Yep. <laughs> with all this gem trade going on, how about the entire city just has gems everywhere? Like, for example, the street lights along the main street are uh, either these wooden or, or metal poles with these ornate uh, holders at the top with these large gem shards, crystals inside that have been enchanted to glow, to illuminate the streets. Or <laughs> how about if, uh, so on buildings, the, the edges of the, of the roofs have maybe little plates of gems along them, like little, little uh, overlapping plates to form the drainage pipes or things like that. I think that sounds much more exciting. We might still use the name Bleakport for something in the future, but especially since this is a shorter campaign, we need to get to the good stuff right away, pretty much. Uh, so one name is, is like the, the official name that, uh, pe that outsiders would call the city, and the other one is a name that the people who live here call the city. So how about no, Wolf doesn't count. The, the name that the people who live there Call it is the shards calling because they were called to live here basically um, but the the other people from the outside call it the radiant city because of all the crystals so let's write that down okay so there we go shards calling the capital radiant city to outsiders or perhaps uh, the radiant city to outsiders and I'll quickly update the map as well Shards calling. So I had an idea for a magic shop in Shards Calling called the Dragon Eye. And the idea behind it is that it's this really clean, very 
uh, well-built, well-presented magic shop. They also identify magic items. And of course, the dragon's eye, or the dragon eye, because this magic shop is directly, or was directly controlled by either the, the scale guard or the, the green matriarch herself. Because, of course, magic items are a thing, adventurers want them, or need them, or find them, and sell them, or buy them. It's a thing that's gonna happen, so if that's a trade going on, then as a ruler, especially a tyrannical one, you would want to control that. So having this official magic shop is a great way of doing that. Plus, the I also thought of the idea that they would offer identifications for magic items. So if adventurers come here, they find magic items somewhere, and they have them ident they want to have them identified to find out what they do, then if they do it at the Dragon Eye, and they would offer really low prices for this, if they do it at the Dragon Eye, then the shopkeepers there keep a record of this magic item was found, it does this thing, this is a description of the people who own it. And Scarcely, then that, of course, gets reported uh, green back. Green Dragon, someone bought a, uh, a nice looking ring. It doesn't do anything, <laughs> but it looks pretty. That's all I've got to report today, thank you. Do you want it? <laughs> do you want it? I can go kill them and get it. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Basically, yes. Mm. <laughs> the dragon. Because, of course, magic items could be very dangerous for a dragon if they were pointed against its face, for example. And I was thinking that, uh, like, visually, like this, of course, this medieval house, multiple floors, and above the entranceway, kind of in this arching, arcing text, it's uh, dragon eye magic shop and identifications with a uh, reptilian eye staring out at you that is enchanted to occasionally blink. So let's write that down. Um, now the aesthetics of this, which I've just described, is something that I don't think I need to put in here yet because I've just got that image in my mind. If this were a campaign that I intend to run for a long, long time, I'd probably <laughs> write a little bit more detail about this, but I'm fairly sure that I can remember it. So the next idea I had was that if nobody knows that the Green Matriarch is gone, they would still just be dumping treasure, magic items, all that sort of stuff, right there. I've written taxes, gold, magic items, are still being dumped at her lair by the scale guard. Now, this is important, because if the players are sent to find out what happened with the dragon, which probably will happen, then they will have a nice hoard of money and magic items for God, their troubles. So, we could right, have been rich. Next, I had yeah. an idea for the name for the chain of islands, which is the Skyfall Isles, which has Quick, we gotta have the same one more route camp as session. Sky... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What are the coordinates of this lair? <laughs> Indeed. Land, uh, that, which is that the, an asteroid came down and struck one of the islands. Okay, so there we go. These are the Skyfall Isles. How about the Beholder uh, having uh, the uncertainty of not knowing what happened to the green, green Matriarch is really concerned, really worried, because all of the contingencies that he's thought of, they don't, didn't account for the dragon to just disappear. And so now in his dreams, he's having nightmares about this uncertainty. And so how about if at um, Rift Vale, monsters are manifesting Rift vale? through the Beholder's dreams? Because normally it's just fun, wacky, magical effects. But recently it's also been monsters. That could be a good intro uh, quest for the party as well. And one of the things I was thinking about these monsters is how about if they have resistance to damage in darkness or dim light? I mean, darkness can be scary because you're uncertain of what's there. And so it makes sense that these creatures would be, it would be an advantage for them to be in, in this space. 
So that's just an idea to keep in mind for when we plan for the adventure. And because of how long this part with the world building stuff is already taking, I've decided to split it into two videos. So you've just watched the world building parts, the uh, stuff, and the next video is going to be about the actual adventure and still a little bit of world building that goes into that. So by that I mean uh, NPCs, other little towns that the players might want to travel to, or stuff to do with the actual adventure. So I will see you then. Bye bye. 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 So yeah. that was the, the first part of the world building stuff. The next part also uh, is 45 minutes. So we obviously don't have time to yeah. watch that now. You could look at the report. Yeah, I don't see the report. What report do you mean? Session report. The, the se session one session. GM report. Because that's only 12 minutes. Yeah, I want to see what you said oh, about it. So you mean... <laughs> Well, but it references the the second part, though. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, but, 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 please. Rumors Buff says, we have time. Ring is it references. Come on, Rumors Buff says, let's Ring is it references the first part. I'm well, going to say we pick that till next time. I mm. mean, I suppose we could. It's not It's not that big yeah. of a reference. I suppose we can. We can, yeah. we can. We'll, time, we'll, time, wibbly wobbly, timey wibbly. We'll, we, we'll retroactively understand it when we watch the yeah. second part of the first GM prep video. All right. Hopefully. That okay. I'm not gonna, okay. That's fine. <clears throat> right. So. Do you not watch? Sure. No. It's just so there's a, a video recommended down there with what looks like a trailer, like a truck trailer that says "naked?" Question mark. Question mark. I have question no mark. idea. That okay. Not gonna watch that, but. Good. Okay, so it. save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll DM it to you. Hello, and welcome yeah, no. to the first GM session report video in this mini-series. If you don't know what this is about, there's a playlist linked in the description, and there's also an announcement video, which will also be linked in the description. Hmm. In short, uh, this is a new series where we're playing a regular game of Dungeons & Dragons, except that I record all of my prep work and also make a report video such as this at the end of every session so that if some things didn't go how they were planned or if I had to improvise or something like that uh, you will know about that. So I've just watched the live stream of the first session and I've made a few notes <laughs> so uh, let's get started. So the all oh right. The first thing I can't even yeah. remember what happened the first session. So <laughs> I am. Vote. So as as I'm talking, I am going to be walking. So if it's laggy, then feel free to close your eyes so you don't get a head a headache <laughs> while it's lagging. <laughs> so because I can't stop the lag. Yeah. Uh, apologies. That's alright. Is right as the session began, I Actually, changed I my mind to... about starting the session. Uh, with the group. One second, I'm changing the resolution. The group. That'll help. It's going to be blurry, but it might help. I changed my mind about starting the session well, uh, with the group it's already fine. at the port. Okay. okay. So, because originally I wanted them to. Oh, the weird creature thing the, the in the cabin. Begin just as the ship has arrived mm -hmm. and are now in the oh, city. Yeah. However, that doesn't really give you. An impression of what it's like to first see this magical city with all its crystals we don't have and all time that. Rooms back. And so I thought it would be much better to have the player's first um, impression of this city also be the character's first impression of the city. And so I changed that around a little bit. Um, the next thing is. That also allowed me to give a little bit of a hint to some of the world building, namely the fact that there is a strange warm current, which if you've watched the prep videos, specifically the first one, you'll know that that is from a chain of volcanic Volcanoes. islands. And yes, that was a cow just in the background. Really? Yeah. <laughs> ah. Which creates so much heat that it creates this tropical current that create that makes the north eastern island actually have a tropical climate and so that's a little hint to that 
Um, so, oh right, the whole scene about the captain's cabin and all the stuff <laughs> that happened in there, that was all off the cuff, just in the moment, improvisation. It, that was the sort of thing where, okay, we're on the scene and we should have a little bit of something, a little scene on the ship before we arrive and depart, just to have a bit of a contrast um, and give a bit of a, of a feeling of just having been on this ship. And so I wanted something that would allow for some dice to be rolled as well. And so I invented the, the captain's cabin and all the stuff that was in there. And if you watch the live stream, you can actually see that when I come, came up with the name of the, the sea swans, I made a little note about that in my uh, notes uh, text document. And I will uh, write a few, like the, the little bits of description that I gave about them, like that there are legends about them bringing luck to ships, that sort of thing. I'll write that down as well. I didn't do that during the session because that would have taken too long and it would have been noticeable that I'm um, writing stuff down, which I want to avoid as much as possible. And I still know what I said, plus I can watch the live stream back, so I can do that later. Um, right, the thing about when uh, Brack gave Carr, uh, well, aided Carr in sneaking into the cabin, I have never run 5th edition before, so I don't know how typically that would work with one character aiding another, and so I just thought, okay, giving the captain disadvantage on perception checks seems like a reasonable thing to do. It doesn't seem too powerful, like the players are always going to win, but it also doesn't seem like uh, Brack helping doesn't do anything. And so that was just a judgment Yay. on my part, improvising <laughs> a, a ruling in that case. And I think it turned out quite well. All right, the next thing is uh, Mima didn't approach the party straight away like I had thought. Instead, she uh, snuck around behind the party, which yeah. uh, meant Made that the, suspicious. the NPC, <laughs> I think Skrull was his name? Something like that. Yeah. I don't have my document here, obviously. He couldn't speak to the party immediately because they went into the tavern on their own accord. So now... He was already mm. waiting by the dock, wow. so he saw them disembark. He recognized um, Arkan, and so he's now just waiting on the outside of the tavern for them to come out <laughs> yeah. to accidentally bump into them. So that's a uh -huh, the thing. little sneak. <laughs> sneak. All oh, right, in the Scaly Shine Tavern, the little bit with the tables hidden behind kind of the draped fishnets and things like that. That was also just made up on this pot, because you know you know how much prep work I did about the Scaly Shine Tavern. Well, you don't because we haven't watched that part. But you you will you will have would have known. Sure. You will know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't part of it. So, yeah, that was just made up on the spot. Um, because one of the players said they wanted a little hidden away table, and so I thought. Instead of just saying, yeah, you get a hidden away table, I could give it a little bit more flavor and a little bit more feeling, which I think turned out quite nicely. Um, also, the two people by that hidden away table who the players interrupted talking, those two guys, that is a fairly tame example of what I like to call an open clue, which is something that I put in sometimes that m is a clue or could be a clue to something but I don't know what it points to yet. So in the future, if I need to, I might be able to now say there are two guys doing some stuff, I don't know, they're, they're doing something and one of, actually you recognize these people. They were, they were in Shard's Calling, in the, sh in the Scaly Shine Tavern talking about secret things or something like that. That's just 
of course without having context of a specific situation it's difficult to come up with improv dialogue but you know what I mean but if this situation doesn't come up then it was just a little bit of flavor to the world so open clues although you've got to be careful with them if you use them too much then it can muddle the water and the players uh, might not know uh, what is an actual clue and what isn't so use them sparingly but I would suggest to use a few of them um, okay next I decided to have the party roll perception for the kobold bringing a drink now you might ask why did I do that that isn't an important thing it well, might be my for two son. reasons one <laughs> is I didn't want the scene to feel static normally if this was just in the the main tavern space downstairs in the main pub space I could have just had other NPCs walking in or um, maybe looking over or a few rumors or whatever going on but because they were secluded I had none of that to keep the the scene feeling alive and so I thought I could of course just have had the kobold bring the drink normally and that was it without anything more but that brings me on to the second uh, point which is that I wanted the party to feel a bit uneasy as though something might be going on behind the scenes because as you and I know there is a lot going on behind the scenes and I just wanted that feeling to be behind there, the screen of it not being uh, static yeah. and so <laughs> that's what happened um, the next thing is the bard playing music uh, I noticed that the scene was slowing down um, after Mima didn't have any clues of who the real thief was nobody really knew where to progress from that immediately and so I needed to keep the scene going a bit to, to keep it from from stagnating and so I decided spontaneously that the bard starts playing music in the main hall and then a, a little bit later uh, people starting to sing along with it just to keep some sort of change happening in the scene and uh, yeah those are pretty much all the points that I noted uh, the only other thing is about the amount of progress the players got done which of course as you know isn't I mean I, I didn't prepare a lot of plot stuff I should turn this way then you've got a nice view down there yeah I didn't prepare a lot of plot stuff but even the stuff that I have prepared we've only gotten through a fraction basically they just got off the boat and met which I to be honest expected because I know I've run enough D, &D sessions to know how much people tend to get done especially if it's a new group um, however I will need to make th I will need to abbreviate some things because we've got even though we the amount of sessions that we have is flexible we don't have that many and so by the end of next session Love I really little. kind of have to have the party little get to uh, Veil Rift oh. did Rift you always say that you, by the time next session the party to Veil yeah, by, in Veil Rift yeah, yeah Roomsworth, <laughs> Roomsworth wants us to make the window smaller yeah it doesn't it's not that easy yeah it's not that easy the screen setup it's yeah. Kind of fixed like this. Yeah. So because if I yeah. if I made the window smaller, that might make it run better. But then I would have to zoom in so that you can still see it on stream in full screen because I'm only streaming in 720p. But then for Discord, since I'm sharing the window, you'd only see a, a sec in. you'd only see a section of the window. Yeah. So it doesn't it's not as easy. We so can look into that yeah. off stream. We'll have, yeah, we'll think about it next stream. Yeah. Fail rift. Fail rift, yes, I think that's what I called it. <laughs> um, because if they don't get there by that point, then that's what I am planning to be a quarter of the live streams already done, and they're, they've not left the town. Now, if this were a, an ongoing game, then I would give the players as much time as they want in the city, in, in Shard's Calling, in the... Uh, we took it anyway. <laughs> the shiny city. Or, well, uh, Basically, yes. The radiant city. Because... If it's interesting to the party, then of course, 
I'm, of course we can stick around there, but I think I do have to kind of push a little harder towards the plot than I normally would have to. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm really happy with how the my, my players are playing their characters and, inter and inter mm -hmm. are interacting with the world and are role playing and all that. And uh, yeah, well done. Thank and you. for when you eventually get to see this. <laughs> and I'm looking forward yeah. to the next session. So, bye bye. 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 Yeah, and that, that is. Nice. Oops, hold on. That might. I think that's Hello. the next one. And welcome yeah, to the, the playlist. No. So, yeah, I mean yeah. That, that is a continuous thread that I kept feeling like I have to push things on for, for further and further. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Which then led to some of the issues that we ended up having, like with uh, Emmy Chu with with you not really having the opportunity to follow your character's uh, own investigations yeah. and threads how you would have liked, for example. Mm. So, yeah. But mm. yeah, also I did have an idea, because in regards to, to... What do you mean, can we see you again? Rooms bath. Oh, I think if oh we you, have mean, like, another... you mean like that, hello. Oh, yeah. Um, mm. So... I think that when we do this again, maybe, actually maybe, can I go, maybe you could screen share from over there and then I stream the Discord window, maybe. Maybe maybe that could maybe improve things. Yeah, that's a good call. Anyway, well, have a think about it. We, we didn't have... Um, we didn't... We obviously didn't test this beforehand. Yeah, we didn't. <laughs> but... Yeah, yeah, so that was that. That was really Lovely. fun. Yeah. Really we, what's, the plan, what's the plan for Monday? Is the plan for Monday to watch uh, the what um, part two of the prep? Or is it Minecraft? I mean, you said you weren't here on Monday. Did so, you? Didn't you? I might not. I might, I might not. Yeah, I, hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm not entirely sure. Because I'm not entirely sure. Because I'm yeah. going to a new place a bit and I don't know how tough the Wi-Fi is. Ah, uh, well, I have literally never been there before. It should be fine. I but... think that I think that if we do Minecraft on Monday and then maybe continue this on Wednesday, perhaps. Yeah, I would. I would on be on Wednesday at nine. Yeah, uh, that would work for me. Sounds good. Yeah, I think we could do it. So next week we could do it on Wednesday oh. and Friday. Yeah, sure. Just get through. Did it freeze the web? Hold on. No, that's oh. fine. Yeah, so. I'd say that's best. So we just so we get that at least done at a reasonable pace. <laughs> yeah, Which, I want to. Yeah. Actually, actually, Wednesday at eight would work for me for a bit, and I'll let you know if. So that's next cause... week as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because okay. I usually because I usually have a thing on on uh, Wednesdays, but that has stopped. Okay. So we don't quite, and we don't quite mm -hmm. know when it's going back on. So I'll let okay. you know if. Yeah. That's good. Although usually nine o'clock is better anyway because it gives a yeah. bit more time for work before yeah. the Lo this. lovely. Yeah. That's true. So yeah, just we can discuss things like planning streams off stream. But yeah, I'm really uh, but, I'm yeah. really happy to finally <laughs> be able to share all of this. Finally. With you because mm -hmm. I've been looking forward to it ever since we started the series. Yeah, same. So <laughs> that was quite interesting. Yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> now I want to binge watch the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll binge watch it together in our own time. Hey. Well, not in our own That's time, but. It's not in... a binge watch. Yeah. We'll binge <laughs> watch it together it's, about it's, once or twice a week. Yeah, and... it's, a, it's a light binge watch. <laughs> anyway. Roomspa thanks us for this. Uh, that was fun. Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, we'll find a way to fix the glitches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for well, for the actual yeah, for the prep stuff, for the prepping, it's, it's fine yeah. really because there's only the text visible, which doesn't really change at all. It's just so, the walking that yeah, is a rotating. That's true. So yeah, we'll look yeah. into things off stream, but yeah, that was Actually, really. It was pretty cool. It it looked <laughs> pretty nice where you were walking. It'd be a good place to go, like trail riding on a horse. 
<laughs> yeah. The the nice thing, I mean, that well, the car that path is mm. within walking distance from where I live. Mm. So, yeah, I'm quite happy that that's there. Mm. Okay, so good night, everybody who's watching. And good night. This will be archived and Bye-bye. linked in the the playlist as well. Nice. So. Good night, Bye-bye. everybody. An archive of an archive. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Good night. <laughs>